As spring gives way to summer, it is a time for growth. Frogs and birds call out during the long hours of the day. Parents prepare their newborns for the risks and rewards of life. Animals are on the move, searching for their next meals. And new characters arrive in Morrison Creek. I'm Bennett Whitnell, and this is Grant Caligari. We are videographers with the Hakai Institute. With the use of these stealth cameras, we've been able to capture subtle and intimate moments that we'd never otherwise get to see with our own eyes. And so far, nature has not disappointed. This bear coming through here. In an inconspicuous forest halfway up Vancouver Island lies Morrison Creek. We have strategically placed camera traps throughout the forest, hoping to capture some amazing wildlife behavior. Morrison Creek has many trails and old logging roads that allow for easy movement. Not just for people, but for animals too. We put up some trail cameras along one of these old logging roads to see which animals take advantage of this path through the woods. A doe is active on an early summer night. Note the chorus of frogs calling loudly from the beaver dam nearby. The summer is a critical time for deer's nutrition. Bucks are quickly growing their antlers and bulking up for the rut, while does are recovering from giving birth and providing milk for their new fawns. For the first time this year, we capture a tiny fawn on camera. It looks to be only a few weeks old. We continue to see bears of both sexes using the scratching tree as a point of communication. They also curiously smell anything that may reveal who might have previously passed through. Bears use their powerful mouths to investigate the world around them. It's a good thing we have our cameras in steel boxes. Bears need a lot of fuel. Green leafy plants make up a big chunk of their diet, but they will also eat just about anything they can find, dead or alive, including mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, insects, fruits, and nuts. A fawn walks across the trail by itself. The dappled white spots on its coat help the fawn blend into its forest surroundings. This simple form of camouflage is called background matching. Early the next morning, before the sun is even up, the first cougar shows up on camera. Cougars have huge eyes with outstanding low light vision. They are solitary animals, but effective ambush predators and prey predominantly on deer. A couple days later and a doe crosses the trail at first light. There is no sign of a fawn tagging along, but that doesn't mean there's cause for concern. Does often leave their fawns hidden while they forage in the vicinity. Another cougar shows up and potentially smells the deer that was there only hours before. Our cameras are picking up cougar more frequently now. This does not bode well for the deer of Morrison Creek. Deer and cougar trade places again, just barely missing each other. Note how the birds are quiet and settled when the deer are around, compared to when a predator appears. A smaller cougar makes a brief appearance. Now the deer are eating wind-fallen poplar leaves off the ground. and this deer has two fawns in tow. When born, fawns lack scent. This helps them evade the sensitive nose of predators. 
They will lay down in cover and stay motionless and silent for protection when they sense danger. This doe is on alert, keeping a close eye on her fawns. It sounds like a windy day, which can limit their powerful sense of smell and hearing. This might be putting the doe on edge. A female bear makes an appearance. They can be identified by having shorter legs, ears more centered on the top of their head, and smaller looking heads than the males. A young bear checks out the marking tree, then curiously gives the camera a close inspection. When it realizes it's likely not natural, it runs off into the bush. Over the next few months, bears will become even more active as they look to bulk up on salmon and other calorie rich foods before the winter. Over at the beaver dam, pine marten play. Marten are seen as indicators of forest ecosystem integrity because they prefer old growth and mature forest habitats and usually make their dens in the hollow trees that tend to be found in older forests. The deer are now in their full summer coats. Notice the black patch on the inside of the rear leg. Deer communicate with the aid of scents or pheromones that come from several distinct glands on their bodies, each transmitting different information to other deer. This tarsal gland likely communicates a deer's health, sex, and status to others. Another gland on the outside of the deer's rear legs releases an alarm scent when the deer senses danger putting others nearby on high alert. The tail end of a cougar passes through. Perhaps it's stalking prey. A bright moonlit night might give the stealthy nocturnal cougar an advantage while hunting. 
Territorial by nature, these big, powerful cats can grow to be almost 9 feet long from tip to tail. Cougars are at the top of the food chain here in British Columbia. Thanks to Mama Deer, these fawns have managed to evade these predators so far. Fall is around the corner and big changes are in store for the inhabitants of Morrison Creek. Join us for the next episode to see what the cameras picked up.